Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit East 2017, brought to you by Databricks. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to Boston, everybody, where the town is still euphoric. Uh, Mike Walteri is here. He's a principal analyst at Forrester Research. Attended the parade yesterday. How great was that, Mike? Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. Like we've ne nothing like we've ever seen. Yeah. Well, all right, the first question is, what was the bigger, shocking, surprise, upset, greatest win? Was it the Red Sox over the Yankees, <laughs> or was it you know, the Super Bowl this weekend? That's week the question, I think it's you the know, Super Bowl, knows, yeah. right? But that was, it was a lot of fun. So how yeah. was the parade yesterday? It was, it was, it was magnificent. Yeah. I mean, it was freezing, no one cared. Yeah. I mean, but it was, yeah, it was great. Great That's to see good. that, that uh, team I in person. I wish we could talk, we can, we can but we'll, we'll get into it. So yeah. we're here at Spark Summit, and um, you know, the show's getting bigger, you see more sponsors, still, oh, yeah. still heavy, heavily a technical audience, mm -hmm. but, um, What's your take uh, these days? Uh, we, were, we were talking off camera about the whole big data theme. It used to be the hottest thing in the mm -hmm. world. You know, now nobody wants to have big data in their title. What's Forrester's take on it? I mean, I think, I think big data, it's just become mainstream. So we're just back to data, you know, because all data is potentially big. Mm. Um, so I, I don't think it's, it's not the thing anymore. I mean, you know, what do you do with big data? You analyze it, right? And part of what this whole Spark Summit is about Look at all the sessions, data science, machine learning, streaming analytics. So, so it's all about sort of using that data now. So, the, so, the, so big data is still important, but the value of big data comes from all this advanced analytics. And yeah, we talked earlier, yeah. I mean, a lot of the value of you know, Hadoop was cutting costs. You, know, yeah. you mentioned commodity components and yeah. reduction in the denominator and, yeah. and, and you know, breaking the, the, the need for some kind of big storage container. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, we got there. Now, mm -hmm. shifting to new sources of value. What are you spending your time on these days in terms of research? Artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, the, you know, so those are really forms of advanced analytics. Um, so that's been, that's been very hot. Um, we did a survey last year, um, an AI survey, and we asked um, a large group of people, we said, oh, you know, what are you doing with, with AI? 58% uh, said they're researching it. 19% send their training a model, right? So, so, that's, so, so that's interesting. 58% are researching it and, and far fewer are actually, you know, actually doing something with it. Now the reality is if you phrase that a little bit differently and you said, oh, what are you doing with machine learning? Many more would say, yes, we're doing machine learning. So it begs the question, what do, what do enterprises think of AI? Um, and what do they think it is? Um, so uh, you know, a lot of my inquiries are spent um, uh, helping enterprises understand what AI is, what they should focus on. And the other part of it is what are the technologies um, used for AI, and deep learning is the hottest. So you wrote a piece uh, late last year, what's possible today in, right. in AI? What's possible today in AI? Well, you know, the fr be before understanding what's possible, it's, un it's important to understand what's not possible, <laughs> right? So we, we sort of characterize it as there's pure AI and there's pragmatic AI. So it's real simple. Pure AI is the sci-fi stuff. We've all seen it, Ex Machina, Star Wars, whatever, right? That's not what we're talking about. That's not what enterprises can do today. Um, we're talking about pragmatic AI. And pragmatic AI um, is about building predictive models. It's about um, conversation, uh, conversational APIs uh, to interact in a natural way with humans. It's about image analysis, which is something very hot because of deep learning. So, so AI is really about uh, bu the building blocks that companies have been using, but then using them in combination to create even more intelligent solutions. And they have more options on the market, both from open source, both from cloud services, that, uh, from Google, Microsoft, uh, IBM, uh, now Amazon, at the re were you guys at the reInvent conference? I wasn't personally, but we were certainly there. Yeah, they, they announced the Amazon AI, right. which is a set of three services that developers can use without knowing anything about AI or being a data scientist. Mm. But I mean, I think the way to think about AI is that it is data science. It, it requires the expertise of a data science, data scientist to do AI. So following up on that comment, which, mm -hmm. which was really interesting, as we try and, or as vendors try and democratize access to machine learning and AI, and I, I say those, I say that with two terms, because usually the machine learning is the stuff that's sort of widely accessible, and AI is a little further out. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, a spectrum when you can just 
access an API, mm -hmm. which is a, like a pre-trained model. Pre-trained model, yep. It's developer accessible. You don't need to yes. be a data scientist. Yep. And then at, at the other end, you know, you need to pick your algorithms, you need to, p you need to pick your features, you need yeah. to find the right data. So how do you see that um, horizon moving over time? Yeah, no, I, I, so these machine learning services, as you say, they're pre-trained models, totally accessible by anyone. Anyone who can call a, uh, an API or, or a RESTful service can access these. But their scope is limited. Right, so if, so if, if for example you take the image API, you know, the imaging API that, that you can get from Google or, or now Amazon, you can drop an image in there and it will say, oh, there's a wine bottle on a picnic table on the beach, right? It can, it can identify that. Um, so that's pretty cool. There might be a lot of use cases for that, but think of an enterprise use case. No, you can't do it. And let me give you this example. Say you're an insurance company um, and you have a picture of a steel roof that's caved in. Yeah. If you give that to one of these APIs, it might say steel roof, it may say damage, but what it's not going to do is it's not going to be able to estimate the damage, it's not going to be able to create a bill of materials because on how to repair it, because Google hasn't trained it, hasn't trained it at that level. Okay, so, so enterprises are going to have to do this themselves. Um, or an ISV is going to have to do it, because think about it, you've got 10 years worth of all these pictures taken of damage, yeah. And with all of those pictures, you've got tons of write-ups from an adjuster. Whoa, I mean, if you could like shove that into a deep learning algorithm, you could potentially have consumers take pictures or someone untrained and have this thing say, here's what the estimate damage is. This is, this is the situation. And I've read about like insurance uh, use cases like that where uh, the customer could, you know, after they sort of have a crack up, take pictures all around the car, yeah. and then the insurance company could provide an estimate, tell them yeah. where the nearest repair shops yeah, are. Yeah, but right now it's like the early days of e-commerce where yeah. you could send an order in, and then it yeah. would fax it and they'd type it yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think, yes, insurance companies are taking those pictures in. The question is, can we, can we automate it? And Well, let me, let me actually iterate on that question, yeah. which is, so who can build a more end-to-end -end solution? Assuming, you know, there's a lot of heavy lifting that's got to go on for each enterprise trying to build a use case mm -hmm. like that. Is it internal development and only at big companies that have you know, a few of these data science gurus? Would it be like an IBM Global Services or an Accenture? Or would it be a, like a vertical ISV who, where it's semi-custom, semi-packaged? I, th I think it's both, but I also think it's uh, two or three people walking around this conference, right? Understanding Spark, maybe understanding how to use TensorFlow in conjunction with Spark, that will start to come up with these ideas as well. So I, I, think, um, I think we'll see all of, all of those solutions. Certainly, like IBM with their cognitive computing, oh, and by the way, so we think that cognitive computing equals pragmatic AI, right? Because it, it, it you know, has similar characteristics. So we're already seeing the big ISVs and the big application developers, SAP, Oracle, creating AI-infused applications or modules. But yeah, we're going to see uh, small ISVs do it. Um, there's one uh, in, in uh, Austin, Texas called Interactive Tell. It's like 10 people. What they do is they use the Google, so they sell to large car dealerships like Ernie Bach, right? And they record every conversation, phone conversation with customers. They use the Google pre-trained model to convert the speech to text, and then they use their own machine learning to analyze that text to find out if there's a customer service problem or if there's a, or if there's a, a selling opportunity, and then they alert managers or other people in the organization. So, small company, very narrowly focused on something like car buying. Mm -hmm. so, so, I wonder if we could I come back to something you said about pragmatic AI. We'd love to have you know, someone like you on theCUBE because we, we like to talk about the horses on the track. Yeah. So, so if, if Watson is pragmatic AI, and we all, yeah. well, I think you saw the uh, 60 Minutes yeah. uh, show, I don't know, whatever it was, three or four months ago, and IBM Watson got all the love. They barely mentioned Amazon and Google and yeah. Facebook. Um, and Microsoft didn't get any mention. So, and, and there seems to be sentiment that, okay, all the real action is in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. but you've got IBM doing pragmatic AI. Right. Do those two worlds come together in your view? How does that whole market shape I up? don't think they come together. 
um, in, 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 in the way I think you're suggesting. I, I think what Google, Microsoft, the Facebook, what they're doing is they're, they're churning out fundamental technology. Right. Like, like one of the most popular deep learning frameworks, TensorFlow, is a Google thing that they open sourced. Right. Um, and as I pointed out, those image APIs that, that, a, uh, that an Amazon has, that's not going to work for insurance. That's not going to work for radiology. Um, so I, I don't think they're Facebook's the, going to apply it differently. I, with yeah, I think I think yeah. what they're trying to do is they're trying to apply it to the millions of consumers that use their platforms, and then I think they throw off some of the technology for the rest of the world uh, to to use. And then the rest of the world has to. Has yeah, to but apply but those. I don't think they're in the business of building insurance solutions or or building uh, logistical solutions. Right. But you said something that was really really um, potentially intriguing, which was you could take the horizontal Google um, speech-to-text API mm -hmm. and, and then it. put your own model on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, the techies call that like ensemble modeling, but essentially you're taking like almost like an OS level service and you're putting a, a, a more vertical application mm -hmm. on top of it to relate it to our old, your old ways of looking mm -hmm. at software. Yeah. And that, that's interesting. Yeah, because it's, what we're talking about right now, like th th this conversation is now about applications. Right. Right, we're talking about applications which need lots of different services recombined, whereas mostly the data science conversation has been narrowly about building one life customer lifetime value model or one churn model. Now the conversation, when we talk about AI, it's coming about um, combining many different services and many different models. And a platform for building applications. Is yeah. Really yeah. And, and that platform, the, the richest platform, or the, the platform that is, um, the platform that is most attractive has the most building blocks to work with. Or, or the broadest, uh, the broadest ones. I, the best ones, I would say right now. Um, the, the reason why I say it that way is because this, this technology is still moving very rapidly, right? So, mm -hmm. so for image analysis, deep, deep learning, yeah. very good for image, nothing's better than deep mm -hmm. learning for image analysis. But if you're doing like business process models or uh, like churn models, well, deep learning hasn't played out there yet, right? So, so, I, so right now, I, I think there's some fragmentation, there's so much innovation ultimately it may come together. What we're seeing is, is many of these companies are saying, okay, look, we're going to bring in the open source. It's pretty difficult to create a deep learning library. And so, you know, a lot of the vendors in the machine learning space, instead of creating their own, they're just bringing in MXNet or TensorFlow. I'm, I'm actually, I might be thinking of something from a different angle, which is not what um, underlying implementation they're using, whether it's, you know, deep learning or whether it's just you know, random forest or mm -hmm. whatever the terminology is, you know, the traditional statistical stuff. Yep. The idea though is you want a platform, like way, way back Windows, you know, with the Win32 API had essentially more widgets yeah. for helping you build graphical applications than any yeah. other platform. Yeah, I see where you're going. And I, and I guess I'm, I'm thinking, it doesn't matter what the underlying implementation yeah. is, yeah. but how many widgets can you string together I'm, I'm totally with you there. Okay. Yeah, and, and so I think what you're saying is, look, a platform that has the most capabilities but abstracts yes. the implementations and can, you know, can be Swap somewhat pluggable, yes. right, could, so, to, to keep up with the, yes. uh, the innovation. Yeah, and there's a lot of new companies out there too that are uh, tackling this. Uh, one of them is called Bonds.ai, you know, small startup. They're trying to abstract deep learning because deep learning right now, like TensorFlow and MXNet, that's, that's a little bit of a challenge to learn. Uh, so they're abstracting it, but but so are um, a, a lot of the uh, so is SaaS, IBM, etc. So Mike, we're out of time, but I want to talk about your talk tomorrow. So yeah. AI meets Spark. Yeah, give us a little preview. Um, AI meets Spark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, a, the prerequisite to AI is a very sophisticated and fast data pipeline, right? Because just because we're talking about AI doesn't mean we don't need data to build these models. So I think Spark uh, gives you the best of both worlds, right? It's designed for these sort of complex data pipelines that you need to prep data. But now with MLlib for more traditional machine learning and now with their announcement of Tensor Frames, which is going to be an interface for TensorFlow, now you've got deep learning too. Um, and you've got it in a cluster architecture 
so it can scale. So Great. pretty cool. All right, Mike, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. You know, way to go, Pats. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, really, pleasure having you back. Thanks. All right, keep thanks, right guys. there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest All right after right this short break. This is theCUBE. Since the dawn.